If you've ever knit fitted sleeves or a top-down sweater with raglan lines, you probably know that increasing stitches and pattern could be quite a pain. But it doesn't have to be. Everything gets easier and more manageable when we break this big task into two parts, increasing stitches and working them into the stitch pattern. In this tutorial, I'll show you how it works. We'll start with the increases. Usually the pattern will tell you where uh, to increase stitches. Um, often it happens at the, um, in the middle of the work, like you see I have a swatch here worked in a kind of a mixed um, rib pattern. So I have the one by one rib uh, in the center and then uh, three knit stitches on each side of the work. So uh, sometimes you might increase in between sections. So I would increase between the rib and the, the three knit stitches. Or the pattern might tell you to increase stitches on the very edge of the work. And if that's the instruction and it doesn't specify how exactly it wants you to increase the stitches, the easiest way to do it is to uh, add a stitch at the end of the next two rows because normally the increases happen at each side of the work. So at the, uh, the end of next two rows, we would add one stitch by backwards loop uh, cast on. So basically you um, place the working yarn on your index finger and then twist the finger to create the loop and then place that loop on the needle and pull it tight. So that's how we add a stitch. Uh, when we increase stitches we don't worry about uh, whether the stitch is a knit or a purl because at this point it doesn't really matter at all. So when you increase stitches think only about increase, increasing stitches and where it should happen. So if it's at the edge of the work, then the backwards loop would be the easiest way to do it. If it's at the center of the work, it, then uh, make sure that you do it in the right spot and don't think about working in the pattern yet. Uh, and we'll worry about this in the next row and that's going to happen right now. So I turn my work and I'm going to pretend that this uh, column of three knit stitches is part of the three by three ribbing that's going to happen later on. So I'm going to kind of increase stitches until I have three purls and then three knits and three pulls and so on. And the same on, the, on this side. So um, I turn my work and I uh, have to work this new stitch right away. And I kind of don't know what to do, right? So if that's the case, and that's going to be the case for everyone, because when you add a new stitch, you have to figure out how to work it. You look at the stitch that is next to it, that is to the left of it um, in this case. So I look at this stitch, the other one, the, the, the one that's next to the new one, and it's a purl. So I see, okay, that's my three purls, and that means I need to knit this new stitch so and that's exactly what i'm gonna do <clears throat> so i take my other needle and knit this stitch if you increase the stitch using backwards uh, loop cast on then when you knit the stitch pull the yarn really tight so that uh, it doesn't get loopy and then work in the pattern so i knit these three stitches and then i move on to my section of knit one purl one and at the end of this row I remember to increase one more stitch because the increases usually are symmetrical so you have to do them in um, within two rows and I'll do the increase the same way using the backwards uh, loop cast on so I place the yarn on the index finger twist my finger create a loop and place it on the needle and it tight. So I turn my work and I have this problem again, right? I have this new stitch. How do I work it? Whether I should knit it or purl it. So again, I look at the stitch that is next to it. So that's a knit and I see, okay, that's my group of three knit stitches. That means that this stitch is going to be purled because I'm building a pattern of knit three, purl three. So I purl this stitch and then work to the end of the row in the pattern. So I purl this one and then as usual I knit 
I need the, the other three stitches and then work in my established one by one rib and then I knit the three stitches at the end of the row and then I already know that I'm gonna purl the stitch because I already figured out where it belongs right so I'm gonna work another row in this pattern and then I'll show you how to increase stitches in the middle of the work we're gonna pretend that those groups of three knit stitches at the edges are kind of our raglan lines because that's the increase that usually happens in top-down sweaters so that's my pattern and here we go so uh, like I said we're gonna pretend that these groups of three knit stitches are raglan lines and let's say the pattern tells us increase one stitch at the raglan line right at each side of the raglan line so that's going to be at each side of this group of knit one per one and work them in the pattern. So I'm going to add new stitch here and here and then I'm going to work them in the ribbing pattern because we usually keep the raglan lines going as they are and the added stitches are usually worked in the pattern that is the main pattern that, that goes between those raglan lines. So uh, to make a stitch, uh, if the pattern doesn't tell you how exactly you're going to do it, then use your favorite way of increasing stitches. I'm going to use a make one and I'm not going to worry at this point about make one right or left. So I'm going to just make the easiest one. So I'm going to pick up the strand between stitches and knit a stitch from that strand. Like I said, at this point, it does not matter at all whether the stitch is a knit or a purl. The biggest uh, problems appear when you try to figure out how to make the stitch, whether it should be made as a knit or a purl. But in fact, it doesn't matter at all. So don't stress yourself out. Just make the stitch the easiest way you can. Usually it's a knit. And then in the next row, we'll figure out where it belongs and how we should work it. So I'm going to work to the kind of assumed raglan line, which is here. And I'm going to make another stitch. Okay, it's going to... Ah, it keeps slipping off. Okay, here it is. So I made another stitch and then I work the assumed raglan lines as as they are so i'm not doing anything fancy to them okay so here it comes the next row and that's when we have to figure out how to work these stitches and we do it the same way i'm gonna grab some yarn we're gonna do it the same way we did with the edge stitches so i knit this stitch then i purl three and i come to this new stitch okay so what do we do here the, the pattern that I want to incorporate it with is the knit one by uh, knit one per one, right? So that's the ribbing. And this is my new stitch. I look to the stitch, I look at the stitch that is to the left of this stitch, and that's a knit. So that tells me that in my pattern, this stitch is going to be a purl because it's knit, purl, knit, purl. So if that's a knit, then the previous stitch is going to be so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to purl it and then work to the, the other stitch that we increased. And that's going to be right here. So that's the other stitch. And uh, at this point, there is no really no doubt because I already work in the pattern. Usually it's much harder uh, to start incorporating stitches so it's usually more questions with this stitch than with this one because you're already kind of in the rhythm of the pattern and of course I understand that if I knit this stitch then I'm gonna purl the next one and then I purl the kind of raglan lines so those three stitches if the pattern is uh, more complicated than a ribbing, let's say you have a um, bigger pattern repeat, you have more stitches, it might not be that easy to figure out as it is in, in this swatch, but what really helps at this point is to add stitch markers. So you basically add a stitch marker 
uh, at the beginning of the pattern repeat and at the end of the pa of the last pattern repeat because most likely you will have more stitches than I do between the increases right so you place a marker at the beginning of the pattern repeat let's say in ribbing because the pattern repeat is knit one for one so I would place a marker here and then you know okay that's the beginning that means these stitches are counted from the end of the pattern repeat right so it would be much easier to see where the new stitch belongs and of course it will be easier to figure out the last stitch because the last increase is usually easier than the first one so use stitch markers and they will make increasing in pattern much easier uh, in stitch patterns that have bigger pattern repeat and that's how we increase stitches in pattern for stitch patterns that involve cables and bigger motifs, it is usually recommended to work the new stitches in stockinette stitch until you have enough stitches for another pattern repeat. But in simpler pa stitch patterns like ribbing or seed stitch, you can work each stitch into the pattern repeat right after you make that stitch. And that way your work will look consistent. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Thursday.